So we're here today doing a three phase board change off the back of condition report that we did for the customer a few weeks ago. So we concluded that it would be recommended that we change the board for a few reasons. I'll just take you through a couple of these now. So you can see that the board is full. Uh, when we take the cover off in a minute, you'll see that we've got several breakers where there's a number of different circuits crammed into uh, some of these breakers. So those circuits need to be separated out and given their own protected device. Just on the front of the board, you can see that we've got, you know, non-manufacturer screws uh, and a, a sort of homemade door hinge. Uh, the front cover doesn't doesn't lock. I mean, that's one of the more minor points, but it's worth noting. And you also see when we take the cover off the board that um, out of the incoming side of the uh, three pole breaker uh, it's also feeding this single phase board that's been added at a later date um, so we can actually get rid of this um, so we're not replacing this with a you know a metal clad board we're just going to incorporate the circuits from here into a new bigger uh, RCBO board so let's have a look under the cover just a quick look inside the board before we start to take it to bits. You can see here, here's the triple pole switch, main switch, and on the red phase, you can see that we've got a line of neutral supplying the single phase board over here. So we can we can get rid of that. Um, yeah, it's a bit challenging to test because you can see that In the original installation, there's not been too much care taken with regards to keeping the cables nice and tidy as they enter the board. Um, notice that as we were going through the testing that the CPCs and the neutrals weren't necessarily sequentially in order with the corresponding line conductor in the top of the breaker. Um, you can see that, if we just have a bit of a close up on red one you can't see it too well but there's three or four different circuits crammed into the top there and in some cases different cable sizes now the problem there is it's very difficult uh, to ensure a good quality connection if you've got different cable sizes in the top of the breaker we see as you screw down um, onto one cable which is slightly thicker a thinner cable might then uh, easily work itself loose fall out. Um, other bits and pieces you can see here that it's an old square D board and it's got these clip-in breakers and some of the clips uh, you know being the age of the board they're just not sitting in there properly and that's yeah not ideal. Um, and then I don't know whether you can see that or not but cable entry to the top of the board there's no grommets there's no fire silicon so what we're going to do here is we're going to strip all this out, label it all up and we just have a look up above, you can see where, let's just turn the torch on, you can see where all those cables drop down into the top of the board. So we're going to pull them all back, we're going to go through this wall here, join any cables as, as necessary. <coughs> And then on the other side of this wall, we're going to fit a brand new consumer unit with enough ways in to accommodate all the circuits required up here. You can also see on the cover of the board here that uh, the circuit schedule leaves a little bit to be desired. So we're going to be providing the uh, customer with comprehensive circuit schedule. So just a quick update here, you can see we've pulled all the cables back 
through into the false uh, ceiling and we've mounted this uh, big IP rated box with mounted some DIN rails. We've got these little DIN connectors in so you can see predominantly the old colours from the original circuits coming into the top of each connector block and then we've run new cable. You can see there's the cable, got it all supported by that galvanised banding. You see we're just popping through, popping through the wall into the top of the new board. So we've neatened up the cables as best we could as they were coming into our, our new joint box. Uh, now because these are screw terminals uh, we need to leave uh, an access hatch so that these joints can be maintained at a future date as required. You can see all the original circuits uh, coming in are labelled up and we're just uh, correlating that with the new joints that we've run so that we can complete a, a comprehensive um, circuit schedule for the customer. So this is the almost finished result of the board change that we've had to do because of the um, requirements on the condition report. So you can see we've increased the size of the board considerably um, as there was lots of ways doubled up in there, should have all been individual uh, devices protecting each circuit. Um, everything's a lot neater now, everything is in order of earth neutral and lives are all in the sequential um, connections. We've come in back at entry, if you can see there, with the three-phase supply coming in, we've had to come in through the back of the board because there was nowhere to get access into the board. Usually you would come in the bottom, preferably, because you've got lots of room here and space for this large cable, but we didn't have that option. So we've had to core drill through the wall and then we have had to come directly into the back of the board with the main supply. We've used Hager, manufacturer Hager for this installation. The board is a good quality board. In the previous panel that you, you've seen already, uh, that had some RCBOs in it on some circuits. Um, not all circuits in this installation required RCD protection, but we've fitted RCBOs on every circuit to go above and beyond for that extra bit of safety. I'm just gonna show you a quick look at the condition report that we've done for the installation just so you know what to expect the layout and how many certificates you should be expecting if you're going to be getting a condition report done yourself so on the first page we've got just basic information the address why the reports required age of the installation and then the outcome of the test which in this case was an unsatisfactory and then also at the bottom there you've got the years uh, required between each condition report and that's dependent on what the building is used for and then you can see we've got observations and recommendations you've got a description there 1 to 12 on this sheet 13 to 22 on that sheet it's a slight description of what the problem is and then the grading of it so we've got C1 C2 C3 and further investigation that you can see at the bottom of the page. So anything that is a C1, C2 or further investigation makes this certificate an unsatisfactory and needs, to be sorting, needs sorting out um, immediately. Anything that is a C3, it is a recommendation. They wouldn't make the certificate an unsatisfactory, but we recommend that you get them jobs sorted as well. Pages five to nine. I'll scroll through them slowly so you can see. All these descriptions are relevant to our regulations and then we confirm that the job is done correctly or not by either a tick non-applicable or if it's a problem we put the code the coding in the box at the end that you can see so you've got the outcome on the far right hand side so everything in these either has to be satisfied or if it's not applicable to this installation that's what the NAs are for page 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 are all the distribution board charts. 
and so you can see db1 at the top right hand corner so that's our circuits there so starting we've got one r one y one b we've got a description of what the what's on that circuit how many points how it's wired what breaker it's protected by and so on so this is this uh, part that we record all the readings that we get and all the circuit information is on these on these sheets and the final one continuation of general comments that's just something that I choose to add to it which is a bit more of a basic description of what problems that we found and what locations they are so if we've got to come back to the installation in future to repair all this we can go straight to the point um, where the problem was just makes it a lot easier and faster and easier to understand as well for the uh, for the end user For the full blog, follow the link in the description.